All right. Speaking a little bit more about statistics, there are some common statistical functions that we do use a lot in Excel. Um, and yet again, you can find those under formulas. And then if you go to more functions, um, they have a whole stat section here. And you don't need to know all of these. Some of these we use more if you're actually taking a statistics course. Um, what we're talking about today are basic statistics that most people are familiar with. Things like the average, also called the mean, um, things like the median, which is the middle value, the mode, which is the most common value, for instance, um, or min and max values. There's some other ones that you may see as well, uh, but those tend to be the, the main ones. And again, if you go to that final sheet here, um, you do have those definitions there as well. So the word average or mean is a kind of central tendency, so a kind of middle value. Um, where you add everything up and then you divide by the number of items you have. Median is the actual middle value. So if you count in towards the center, like what number is in the middle of the data. Mode is the one that occurs the most often. Um, so those are three of the really common ones that we tend to see here. So going back to my call log feature, I'm just going to do a little video with some of those. So maybe I'd like to know the average hold time. Now, Excel does not use the word mean in case you're used to a more formal stats, um, stats language. They use the word average. So we would type our equal sign. And again, you can find it under the formula key or you can just start typing and you just want average. And then I'm just going to select the numbers that I want. I'm looking at the average hold time here. So I'm going to select the hold times. And then when I'm ready, I just hit enter and I will have that answer. So there is my average um, for the whole times. If I want to do the median, I can just type in median. And again, this is a different kind of center. So average is adding up all the numbers and then dividing by however many we've added. Median is literally counting in to that middle number. Um, so again, I can select that whole time there. Or if I want to, um, you know, it may just be easier as well um, to use the column heading here. So my column heading is H in this case. So I can type H column H. And again, just make sure you have the correct column selected there. Um, and I can hit enter and get that median value. So I can either select the cells, or if I know I'm going to use the entire column, then I can go ahead and do that. Um, these formulas that use numbers will ignore the cells that have just words in them. So you can um, you can go ahead and feel free to use them. For common hold time, this is actually looking for the mode. What was the most common um, hold time? Was it 10 seconds? Was it 40 seconds, what was it? So that is your mode there. Uh, we have two mode features. So multi-mode and single mode. Um, so single mode just returns um, the, the most value, like whatever number occurs the most. However, sometimes it could be that two numbers occur the most or three numbers all occur the same number of times. So that would be for mode multi. So mode multi will give you all answers. So maybe the value of 10 seconds and 30 seconds are both very high. They both occur the most. It would give you both of them. If you select just single, then it will only return one of them. So that's the difference between your two mode features there. Um, your book wants to use mode single, so I'll just follow suit there. And I'm gonna just select the whole column. Um, and I get a value of 28. And then my shortest hold time, so think about another word for short is the minimum. So I can look at the minimum hold time. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead, oops, and select that whole column. And you can see in blue what's selected. So one second was the minimum hold time. Good job for that person who got that call. And then our maximum hold time, um, was 163 seconds. Um, so I don't know, a couple minutes, right? So not too bad, but still a lot longer than that one. So these are pretty common um, statistical functions that we do use a lot um, that most people are familiar with here as well. 
All right. Um, and just doing maybe a little bit more work here. Let's see if I can scroll down a little bit here. Um, so again, you can kind of keep going through and, and calculating some more averages, looking at call durations now. Um, so your average, your median, your mode, your min, and your max, and so on. Uh, and kind of looking at more value. So I encourage you to kind of follow along with the text here as well. Um, but you can also go ahead and do some of that nested function work. So for instance, I'm just going to deviate a little bit from the text here, but let's say I wanted to round my average whole time. I could make this a nested function instead, right? So maybe I would like to round this. I'm just going to round it regular. Um, and I'm going to round the average of whatever that that whole time cell was. So I'm going to do all of column H here. And I do not want any decimal places. I'm just going to use whole numbers here. So I could go ahead and again, kind of play around with these more nested formulas as well. So maybe I would like to round my average. So you can write the round first. And then in the parentheses, you do the work for the average. And then just don't forget the comma with how many decimal places you would like. So my average whole time is 27 seconds here if I round to the nearest whole. Um, one last thing I do want to go uh, mention in this video is that when you are using these functions and a lot of functions that use numbers is that they will naturally skip over any cells that are blank or that have words in them. You know, so when I said here to some of these examples, like, oh, you can just type in the whole column, it will ignore the words whole time, for instance, or it will ignore these blank cells. It will, it will just use cells that have numbers in it. So something that you have to think about as the person who is uh, organizing the workbook is, is that what you want? So for instance, you know, maybe we're looking at, um, some information here about um, our call center, and we'd like to know the average number of calls per day. Well, we could leave cells blank, let's say for weekends. Maybe the call center is not open on weekends. So one way to do it is to leave weekend days blank, only fill in days that we actually work, and we find the average that way, so we're getting the number of calls where the call center is open per day, right? Another way to do that is to fill in zeros for the weekends or days that the call center is closed so that your, your worksheet is showing that you have, you know, zero calls on that day. So for instance, I'm just going to make something up for a second. So let's say we have Monday, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So let's say on Monday, and again, I'm going to just keep these numbers kind of small. We get 12 calls. On Tuesday, we get 15. On Wednesday, we only get eight. On Thursday, um, I don't know, we get 20. And on Friday, we get 25. And the call center is closed on Saturdays and Sundays. So I could find the average number of calls per day and just highlight my cells here. And you'll see that it just ignores these cells that are blank. So 16 is the average number of calls per day for the days that the call center is open. Now, maybe you'd like to just know the average overall for the week. Um, so what you could do is you could put in zeros here, and you can see that you get very different answers. Um, and both are valid. It just depends on which kind of information are you looking for. Are you looking for the average calls per day when the call center is open, or are you just looking at an average, including all days of the month or all days of the year, including holidays and things like that? So maybe one or the other is more beneficial to your company. Um, so it's just something to think about when you do your formulas. Would you like to leave your cells blank if there's no data? Or should you put in zeros um, because you actually want to look at something a little bit different? Um, so just something to think about as well as you're going through and doing your formulas.